Hi everyone, if you remember, Ratty Mole have taken refuge in Mr Badger's house and they'd gone to bed feeling a lot better about the world after a big supper. So we'll see how they're getting on. Chapter 4, Part 2 In accordance with the kindly Badger's injunctions, the two tired animals came down to breakfast late next morning and found a bright fire burning in the kitchen and two young hedgehogs sitting on a bench at the table eating oatmeal porridge out of wooden bowls. The hedgehogs dropped their spoons, rose their feet and ducked their heads respectfully as the two entered. There, sit down, sit down, said the rat pleasantly, and go on with your porridge. Where have you youngsters come from? Lost your way in the snow, I suppose. Yes, please, sir, said the elder of the two hedgehogs respectfully. Me and little Billy here, we was trying to find our way to school. Mother would have us go, and the weather ever so. And of course, we lost ourselves, sir, and Billy, he got frightened and took and cried been young and faint-hearted. And at last we happened up against Mr Badger's back door and made so bold as to knock, sir. For Mr Badger, he's a kind-hearted gentleman, as everyone knows. I understand, said the rat, cutting himself some rashes from a side of bacon, while Mole dropped some eggs into a saucepan. And what's the weather like outside? You need sir me quite so much, he added. Oh, terrible bad, sir. Terrible deep the snow is, said the hedgehog. No getting out for the likes of you gentlemen today. Where's Mr Badger? inquired the mole as he warmed the coffee pot before the fire. The master's gone to his study, sir, replied the hedgehog, and he said as how he was going to be particularly busy this morning and on no account was he to be disturbed. This explanation, of course, was thoroughly understood by everyone present. The fact is, as already set forth, when you live a life of intense activity for six months in the year and of comparative or actual somnolence for the other six, during the latter period you cannot be continually pleading sleepiness when there are people about or things to be done. The excuse gets monotonous. The animals well knew that the badger, having eaten a hearty breakfast, had retired to his study, settled himself in the armchair with his legs up another, legs up on another, and a red cotton handkerchief over his face, and was being busy in the usual way at this time of year. The front door bell clanged loudly and Rat, who was very greasy with buttered toes, sent Billy, the smaller hedgehog, to see who it might be. There was much sound of stamping in the hall, and presently Billy returned in front of Otter, who threw himself on the Rat with an embrace and a shout of affectionate greeting. "'Get off!' spluttered the Rat with his mouth full. "'Thought I should find you here all right,' said the Otter cheerfully. "'They were all in a great state of alarm along the river bank when I arrived this morning.' Rat never been home all night, nor mole either. Something dreadful must have happened, they said, and the snow had covered up your, all your tracks, of course. But I knew, when people were in a fix, they mostly went to Badger, or else Badger got to know of it somehow, so I came straight off here, through the wild wood and the snow. My, it was fine, coming through the snow as the red sun was rising and showing against the black tree trunks. As you went along in the stillness, every now and then masses of snow slid off the branches suddenly with a flop, making you jump and run for cover. Snow castles and snow caverns had sprung up out of nowhere in the night, and snow bridges, terraces and ramparts. I could have stayed and played with them for hours. Here and there, great branches perched, great branches had been torn away by the sheer weight of the snow, and robins perched and hopped on them in their perky, conceited way, just as if they had done it themselves. A ragged string of wild geese passed overhead, high on the grey sky, and a few rooks whirled over the trees, inspected, and flapped off homewards with a disgusted expression. But I met no sensible being to ask news of. About halfway across, I came, I came upon a rabbit sitting on a stump, cleaning his silly face with his paw. He was a pretty scared animal when I crept up behind him and placed a heavy forepaw on his shoulder. I had to cuff his head once or twice to get any sense out of it at all. At last I managed to extract for him that Mole had been seen in the wild wood last night by one of them. It was the talk of the burrow, he said, how Mole, Mr Rat's particular friend, was in a bad fix. How he'd lost his way, and they were up and out hunting, and were chiving him round and round. Then why didn't any of you do something, I asked. You may not be blessed with brains, but there are hundreds and hundreds of you big stout fellows, fat as butter, and your burrow's running in all directions. You could have taken him, in, taken him in and made him safe and comfortable, or try to at all events. What, as, he merely said, do something, as rabbits? 
so I cuffed him again and left him. There was nothing else to be done. At any rate, I'd learnt something, and if I had the luck to meet any of them, I'd have learnt something more, or they would. Weren't you at all uh, nervous, asked the Mole, some of Yesterday's terror coming back to him at the mention of the wild wood. Nervous? The otter showed a gleaming set of strong white teeth as he laughed. I'd give him nerves if any of them tried anything with me. Here, Mole, fry me some slices of ham. So fry me some slices of ham, like the good little chap you are. I'm frightfully hungry, and I've got any amount to say to Ratty here. I haven't seen him for an age. So the good-natured Mole, having cut some slices of ham, set the hedgehogs to fry it, and returned to his own breakfast, while the otter and the rat, their heads together, eagerly talked river shop, which is the long shop and talk that is endless, running on like the babbling river itself. A plate of fried ham had just been cleared and sent back for more when the badger entered, yawning and rubbing his eyes, and greeted them all in his quiet, simple way, with kind inquiries for everyone. It must be getting on for luncheon time, he remarked to the otter. Better stop and have it with us. You must be hungry this cold morning. Rather, replied the otter, winking at the mole. The sight of these greedy young hedgehogs stuffing themselves with fried ham makes me feel positively famished. The hedgehogs, who were just beginning to feel hungry again after their porridge, and after working so hard at their frying, looked timidly up at Mr Badger, but were too shy to say anything. Here, you two young youngsters, be off home to your mother, said the Badger, kindly. I'll send someone with you to show you the way. You won't want any dinner today, I'm, I'll be bound. He gave them sixpence apiece, and a pat on the head, they went off with much respectful swinging of caps and touching of forelocks. Right, guys, we'll leave it there. Hopefully you're all okay. You're keeping safe, you're keeping happy, and you're keeping reading. I'll see you soon. Bye.